Stephen Faison, welcome to Berlin. Thank you. Welcome to the uh, series of conferences about American European values. You are for the first time here. What are your impressions? Of the conference? Of the conference. Uh, I found it to be very stimulating. It's um, it's relaxed. It's informative, and um, there's a good diversity of interests and topics. So it's been very enlightening. When I ask people about impressions uh, about the conference, they stress diversity, and you are saying the same thing. Yeah. Diversity is a strong point of our conference. You are saying. I think so. That. Um, I think it's a pluralistic approach to philosophy right, that doesn't um, overvalue any particular approach. Some people can say that diversity can kill professionalism, and when you have diverse opinions, attitudes, so we are talking about many things, but no conclusion, no professional attitude towards philosophizing. Mm. What do you think about this? Uh, it doesn't bother me in the least. Uh -huh. yeah, in fact, um, I think that's. I'm not particularly fond of um, the profession, professionalization of philosophy, right? uh -huh. which it becomes sort of limited to what is of interest to academics, you know, and professors and so forth. I, I, I mean, one of my interests in the conference and in practical philosophy is the sense in which philosophy is part of the um, equipment for living for people who are trying to find their way in the world and answer if not answer the questions, at least raise important questions that help them live better, understand themselves better, that it ought not to be the, um, the province of um, just academics. So that doesn't bother me at all. Do you give your presentation today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. What, what will you be talking about? Well, uh, it's called um, Poetic Justice, uh, Apology Overdue. And um, it actually takes on, it, it actually um, takes its, its style from Plato's Apology. And uh, it's set in sometime after the Republic. And um, the premise is that the Republic that Socrates describes in, uh, has been implemented. And now we have a poet who is on trial facing charges very similar to the ones that Socrates faced. And he's defending poetry, and I guess more generally than poetry, uh, storytelling as a legitimate means of conveying philosophical ideas. When we met first time, many, many years ago, maybe 10 years ago in Nashville, you were interested in cinematic philosophy, in, in films. Yes, I still am. I mean, again, narr narr storytelling, narrative approaches, so I see uh, films is another form of narrative. So you confirm uh, that philosophy can be seen in films as well? Oh, sure. sure. And many people who love films and do not love, fi do not love philosophy, they make a mistake because it goes, these both disciplines can be together. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, go so, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, um, or at least I'm not prepared to say now, that every film is philosophical. I'm not saying every film, no. but many films. Yes, but I can think be seen philosophically. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, um, put me, uh, I guess, say issues of identity, for instance. Right? We have. Um, I know my first my first job we did an identity series with the philosophy club, because again, the, the notion is what are the students interested in, not so much what are the academics interested in. And they were interested in this issue of identity, personal identity, the impact of technology on identity, uh, what will the future, if we have artificial intelligence and so forth, what is the status of identity, the human versus the so-called non-human and so forth. So we looked at that in, um, I, think, I think they wanted to watch, uh, we did watch um, Blade Runner, for instance, that's a very right. popular film to get at that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Glad to be here.